And then to suddenly be told you've got a mental illness is, um, I mean, denial is a great thing, so. I had to accept the fact I had a mental illness to get better. Well, I think um, in the beginning it was Dad learning about Mum's illness, so he knew um, what, I guess, to tell us kids and what we obviously didn't need to know. And I think it's tremendously important for for people who experience mental illness and for family members to, to speak out about their illness. Because the more that we share the messages of, of what it's like, then that helps reduce uh, stigma. I just didn't want to face up to that. I, I couldn't face it because of what it meant. It meant that I was a failure, it meant that I was weak, it meant that I was soft, it meant that I was cracked. And um, I've always prided myself on my intellect and uh, ha having a sharp mind. And now to be told that your mind is broken, it was, a, it was a really, really, really big blow. So in the beginning it was a lot of Dad learning about different mental illnesses and learning about um, best ways, I guess, to support Mum and then how to look after us. So I think education was the first thing and then from there he pretty much just sort of went with the flow and figured out how to do stuff. Well, some of the important things that I've done in managing my mental illness would have been uh, uh, getting support uh, getting uh, clinical support and community support and I had to get people to listen to me and also me to listen to people for advice. The diagnosis made sense um, because all of the signs and symptoms pointed that way and the doctor did a good job of diagnosing me but at the same time I didn't want to accept it. So while I accepted it mentally, I didn't accept it emotionally. And I thought, no, I'm, I'm going to get through this. I'm just going to knuckle down. I'm going to, I'm going to get through. I'm going to tough it out. And so it, it was months of even more conflict, of, of, of even more hostility, of just, you know, hitting the bottom of the barrel and starting to dig my way through it. That's how low I was kind of going, to the point of being suicidal before I even filled that script for, for medication. And I went to books. I read books. And um, because the counselling and the books, the books actually was very uh, helpful, but only to a certain point. I needed the human touch, so I needed the, um, the counselling bit as well. I just found having that, again, that, that, that place you can come to where you can start to achieve things, where you're working with other people who appreciate your abilities and what you bring to the table. I've got a great team here. so. I think even work has been part of my recovery as well. It's kind of given me um, some significant, some meaning, some rewards there as well, which are, as a bloke I think is important. And then uh, an opportunity came up in Anglicare to do some education stuff around mental health. And I'm, I'm really passionate about dealing with stigma. There are a lot of champions out there who have a mental illness and, and uh, you know, are working in professional jobs, uh, uh, integrating into the community, they have families and uh, they are uh, well-respected people in the community and yet they have a mental illness. So I think, I think that something that is important is that I think that the, no matter how, uh, how incapacitated the person is, I still feel that the role that the person performs as like a father is really important and I think it's important for fa not just for fathers to know that but I think it's important for both parents. I think it's for mothers to know that as well and for extended family members because I think there was a tendency that um, people would see me interacting with him and they would see me after he'd gone and I'd be quite upset and people would see that as a, okay, that's a negative thing and therefore he was discouraged from uh, coming to see me and have interaction with me. And I think that is the exact opposite of what I wanted. I think that it's not just a question of the, of the father and, and what dads have to do in that. I think that, um, I think that other family members have got a responsibility as well. And the more severe the person's mental illness is, um, the greater the responsibility of other family members who perhaps don't have a mental illness to contribute to uh, uh, increasing understanding uh, and tolerance of, uh, of uh, mental illness. Sometimes people don't have an insight of their mental illness. When, when, it's, uh, when it's at an acute stage. The family is the one that understands the symptoms. So you have to be reliant on the family's knowledge at times. Sometimes clinicians rely on the family to give that information. We all could have had greater compassion and understanding than just putting it all on the person with the mental illness, putting it all on the dad, or you know, saying, oh, gee, that's dad's 
um, you know, problem or that's dad's illness or whatever, you know, I think that uh, it's not uh, just dad's illness, it's a family uh, situation. Mm -hmm.